everyone, and welcome back to the MFT YouTube channel. It's Carolyn here, and I'm stopping by today to share another interactive card process video with you. It features the previously released turntable dynamics and the For the Record stamp set. Ever since these two products were released, I've been determined to figure out a way to design a pull tab mechanism that would make the record spin 360 degrees, and I'm thrilled to tell you that I did it. It's a super easy mechanism that can be used in all kinds of scenarios. So let's get started. I did all of the die cutting for this project off camera so that I can focus on the assembly of the mechanism. I've listed all of the MFT products that I used below in the description box. Here I'm adhering a stitched rounded corner rectangle cut from Summer Splash cardstock to a 4 inch by 5 and a quarter inch smooth white image panel with tape runner adhesive. I left the bottom margin a little larger than the top margin to leave room for the stamp sentiment. I've placed the panel inside my Mini Misty and I'm stamping the sentiment from the For the Record stamp set on the bottom right margin using black licorice hybrid ink. I die cut two pull tabs from smooth white cardstock using the meat in the middle dynamics. But if you don't have that die set, you could cut two three and a quarter inch by five and a quarter inch strips and glue them together. I actually used a mishmash of dies from what I had in my stash to create this mechanism. So I'll mention measurements where I can in case you don't have those dies. I glued the pool tabs together with tape runner adhesive. I die cut the components for the turntable dynamics from black licorice, razzleberry, and smooth white cardstock. I've positioned the record towards the left side of the summer splash panel, and I'll use a pencil to mark the center hole. Then I'll use a quarter inch circle die that I found in the toasty greetings dynamics to die cut around that circle. I tried to use my long reach quarter inch hole punch for this, but it wasn't quite long enough to reach the position that I needed. So I scrounged through all the dies in my stash and found one that would work. Now I need to mark a center line on the pull tab so that I can center it behind the image panel. I'm using my T ruler to find the center. Man, this thing is such a handy tool to have. With that center line marked, I can see where the center of the pull tab is through the hole in the image panel. I want the pull tab to extend beyond the right edge of the image panel about a quarter inch, and once it's in place, I'll mark that circle onto the pull tab. I grabbed my T ruler again because I realized that I needed that center line to be extended a bit more so that I know where to place the holes that I'll need, and you'll see why in a bit. But you can see that I'm marking a dot on the center line about a quarter of an inch from the left end and about one and a half inches to the right of the center circle. And then I'll use my 1 inch hole punch to punch those two holes. If you don't have a 1 inch hole punch, you could use a paper piercer and mat instead. Once the holes are punched, I'll use my magic eraser to remove all of the pencil markings that I made. I die cut a half inch circle using another die from the meat in the middle dynamics from smooth white cardstock, and I'm adhering a spin and slide disc to the back side of the circle with double sided tape. I've placed that assembled spin and slide disc through the hole in the image panel. I'll remove the liner paper from the double sided tape on the spin and slide disc and I'll mark the center with a pencil. This will help me center the record on top of the spin and slide disc. Then I'll flip the panel over and start the assembly of the pull tab mechanism. I've got a 12 inch piece of nylon jewelry thread that I had in my stash. The label says it's eight pound weight. Here I'm threading it through the hole on the right end of the pull tab and I'll use some quarter inch double sided tape to secure the thread in place. Once I got one end of the nylon thread secured, I realized that I needed to stabilize the pull tab. So I die cut a collar piece from printer paper, again using one of the dies from the meat in the middle dynamics. If you don't have this die set, you could trim a piece of half inch by two and a half inch strip of paper and fold it in thirds. I've secured the ends together with liquid adhesive and then I'll slide it through the end of the pull tab and secure it to the right edge of the image panel using double-sided tape. This has become my favorite way of stabilizing a pull tab because it keeps the pull tab from moving around too much and you don't need any bulky foam tape to keep things aligned. Once the pull tab is secured by the collar, it's easier for me to wrap that nylon thread around the spin and slide disc. I wrap it around about three times and keep the thread pulled pretty tight. I've trimmed off some of the excess and then I'll feed the end through the other hole and secure it with another piece of double sided tape. Once that tape is in place, I'll just run my fingernail over the back of the double sided tape to make sure that those ends are good and stuck. And then I'll use my scissors to trim off the rest of the excess nylon thread. 
Now that my mechanism is assembled and a quick test drive shows that it's working, I can start to adhere the rest of the turntable die cuts. I've sped up the camera in places where the assembly is pretty straightforward. For the most part, I'm adhering the die cuts for the turntable with liquid adhesive. Pulling out the turntable dynamics and using them again reminds me so much of my college days. We'd sit around and listen to our favorite songs and albums over and over again. When I was having a particularly bad day, I'd set it on repeat. Somehow, that music would take away all my cares, and it still does, even 40 years later. Yes, I'm that old. But I digress. I wanted to mention that I die cut the turntable arm out of smooth white cardstock three times because I wanted it to have more stability, since it sort of hovers over the top of the record. I'm adhering the three layers together with liquid adhesive. While I assemble some of the other parts of the turntable, I wanted to mention that I feel like this mechanism would be great for a few different scenarios. You could make the wheels of a bicycle or a car spin, or how about a pinwheel, windmill, or a planet spin around and around. The possibilities are endless, so I hope you'll try this out with an idea that you might have. My friend Laura Davalo suggested that it'd be super fun to make crazy hypnotic eyes spin. She's so stinking clever. Okay, I'm adhering the end of the turntable arm to the platform with a piece of foam tape, and I'll position it so that it looks like the needle is in the grooves of the record. And since this is sort of a love-themed card, I wanted to add some hearts that I die cut using Blueprints 27 for the large heart and the smallest heart die from the Band-Aids Dynamics. I'll adhere the largest heart in the center of the record and the two smaller hearts on the buttons of the turntable, all using foam squares to adhere them. And in an effort to keep the mechanism from overspinning, I decided that I'd add a slim piece of foam tape just to the left of the end of the pull tab. And then I'll pull the pull tab out as far as I think it needs to go and I'll add a second piece of foam tape just to the left of the collar's edge. Both of these pieces of foam tape will act as stoppers. Now I can adhere the assembled image panel to a 5.5 by 8.5 inch black licorice card base that I've scored at 4 and a quarter inches, folded in half, and perfected the crease with my Teflon bone folder. I've added foam squares to the back of the image panel where it won't interfere with the mechanism, and I removed the liner paper from the foam tape stopper that sits at the end of the pull tab. This will keep the pull tab from popping out of the other end. Off camera, I stamp the word pull from the interactive label stamp set at the end of the pull tab using black licorice hybrid ink. I can't even tell you how happy I am with how this turned out. I can't wait to apply this mechanism to another project soon. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and that it will give this spinning pull tab mechanism a try for yourself. If you have any questions at all, please leave them below and I'll do my best to get you the answers that you need. Thanks so much for watching today. Be sure and subscribe to the MFT YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of the crafty deliciousness that we share here on a regular basis. And until next time, have an awesome day.